Michael is just a sweet little boy. He has this energy about him that is just indescribable. I mean, he's almost angelic. He's got a heart of gold, obviously, fully repaired, but he's a really special kid. When people get to know him initially, like let's say at his ABA clinics or even at school, you know, they might think it's a little bit difficult to work with by a couple weeks though. They just fall in love with the kid. Like it's so fun to see. It's the sweetest kid there is. Pregnancy was pretty easy, basic, just like it had been with Kennedy. And then the Friday, the day that I actually delivered him, was just a scheduled non-stress test again, and the nurse could not find a heartbeat. My mom kind of pushed to have them do some further testing and not just the typical non-stress test. And at that point, they realized that there was no fluid left and the cord had dried up and basically he was not getting much oxygen still not knowing it had anything to do with his heart. When Michael was born, they weighed him, they looked at him, and they just let us be. I mean, it was just like a typical delivery for them. They sent us home with our brand new baby and, um, you know, basically wished us luck and not thinking anything would ever happen. She was sick from the delivery. I took him to his first appointment and at that point, um, his feet were blue, and all around his mouth was blue. And that was on Tuesday, and by Friday, he was in cardiac and respiratory arrest. You know, the thoughts that race through your mind, not sure what's going on and what's happening, to then never even know that this little, tiny little baby could have five holes in that tiny heart. That was, it was a wild, wild time. I remember the day, uh, like it was yesterday, it was, I was sitting in the hospital room and they called us and, and told me, and I was actually by myself, Liz was getting some relief sitting at home. And uh, so yeah, I just started crying like I'm doing now. <laughs> uh, it's a tough day, but very thankful he's here and where he's gotten to today. We lived at the hospital room for a month. I mean, constantly there was beepers and alarms going off because he was bradying and his heart rate was exceeding where it was supposed to be and it was just a very tough month. A tough, tough time to see your child go through that. The day that we took him home was obviously the most exciting day but also the most terrifying day to be sent home with your baby with their newly um, fixed heart. We were so happy to have him home and they had welcome home signs and Many people welcomed him when when we got back that day. It just felt like, you know, we made it at one one point, but it was just starting the journey. But just happy that he was at least healthy in his heart and we were gonna see what happens next. His heart was fully repaired. So at this point, his his heart's great and it's truly it's amazing. I mean all the research that was put into place prior to even Michael being here, for them to be able to go in on the tiniest heart at two weeks old and perform surgery on five separate holes um, is amazing. And I think that the research that the American Heart Association has done to be able to have babies live through that is incredible. I just want to thank the American Heart Association for being, you know, giving Michael this opportunity to be the heart hero. Uh, it means a lot to us. and. and Hopefully to him one day when he realizes it, but just the opportunity is huge for us just to get the recognition out there with what happened with his heart and where he's at today. One thing that I want the donors to know is that their support and dedication really matters. I mean, Michael's heart didn't stop that night and he was given a second chance of life. And for that, I mean, my hope is that the American Heart Association can draw more awareness around genetic disorders and heart disorders so that another family doesn't have to go through what he did.